So let's say you're a Prisma 3D beginner who just recently discovered the app and you want to make some cool stuff but you don't know how. But then you stumbled upon this channel and found some beginner tutorial videos. And coupling your creativity along with these poorly made tutorial videos, you become a modeling expert. And now you're making some really cool stuff but whenever you look at your models, you always have that feeling that something is missing. So you take your projects to Prisma 3D Professional to help you tweak them to make them look better. And then somehow he managed to turn this to this. And at that moment, you were convinced that there was something Prisma 3D users were doing that they refused to tell you. Welcome to the fourth episode of the Prisma 3D tutorial beginner series and in this video we're going to be talking about lights. To access the light objects, all we have to do is to go to the prefab menu and select the third option. It's pretty hard to miss because it resembles a light bulb. Although this kind of lighting will work for some scene, but I personally prefer more contrast. And to get that, you can go over to the render settings and switch to night mode. Although you can manually darken the model materials one after the other to achieve this, but night mode kind of does it faster. The second parameter under the light is the color and it's really easy to use as all it does is to change the color of the light. And then we have intensity which is for brightness and we have range which is for how far the light will shine. And then we have the shadow bar and the only way to explain this is the higher the shadow value, the darker the shadow. As for the first parameter which is the light type, there are three basic types which the first is the sun. And the way this works is I cast a bunch of parallel rays in a specified direction. And next up we have the spotlight and the major difference between the spotlight and the point light is that it has an angle bar which determines how wide the spotlight is. You can actually make objects work better with light by changing up their reflection settings, which is in the material tab. And personally, I don't use these preset values as I just work on the specular and smoothness directly. While in night modes, the specular actually darkens the model while the smoothness makes it more reflective. And if you want the shadows to be a bit softer, you can just spawn in one light, increase the shadow all the way to one, reduce the intensity and make multiple copies of that light. And since our camera is going to be far away from the shadows, I think 5 will be enough so we can now group the lights together, take it all the way back and tweak the colors a little bit. And one thing you should know when using night mode is that if you take the specular of an object below zero, it will actually make the object brighter. And in this case, going for a negative 10 will make it a plain white material. And then we can just throw in a low range light to complete the effect. To get textured lights, all you have to do is to enclose a light in a sphere and apply a texture with transparency to that sphere. And for the sole purpose of keeping this as a beginner tutorial, I will just provide the project files in the description. 